Okay, bear with me for a moment. One of the things that's really challenging about studying neurophysiology is that when, when we learn neurophysiology, we learn what happens in a single nerve cell, right? But in the context, trying to understand it, you can't understand it from the point of view of a single nerve cell. Let me give you an analogy, okay? Let's imagine you've got a cell phone, right? And let's imagine you come from, I don't know, 100 years ago, and someone's going to explain to you something about a cell phone. And if what they show you is what this cell phone can do, and they show you, you can type in a text and hit send, and you've sent a text. You would say, why would I want to do that, right? When we are teaching you how a nerve cell does what it does, we're, we're telling you basically how it receives a message and how it sends it. But in order to understand the whole mechanism, you got to understand that just like cell phones are attached to millions of other cell phones, individual nerve cells, neurons, are attached to millions of other neurons. Okay? So we are going to study two different processes. Here's going to be my basic nerve cell. Okay? And the things that we're going to study will be something that happens here at the axon. What happens at the axon is called an action potential. And then here at the dendrites and the cell body, that doesn't look at all like dendrites, and cell body, what happens there are events that are called graded potentials, right? And then what happens down here at the axon terminals and the synaptic bulbs, terminus, is going to be the exocytosis of neurotransmitters. Now, this is how we study it. Sort of like saying, here I, something, my, my phone says words and I type in words and I hit send. My phone gets words, I type in words and hit send and it's gone. So when you think about what one cell does, you're like, why does that even matter? Just like when you think about one phone, why does that matter? But when you know that when I hit send, it goes to another cell that is going to decide whether or not to send it along and might send it along to five of its friends who in, in return might send it along to other cells, then it starts to make more sense, okay? So keep in mind that when we are studying graded potentials and action potentials and the exocytosis of neurotransmitters, when we're talking about all of that, we could start anywhere because this little cell here is going to come in contact with the next cell there, sorry, and that one's going to come in contact with another cell here, sorry, and maybe that cell over there. And altogether, what we have is a neural network. An individual cell called a nerve cell that can do the stuff we're talking about is not useful, okay? The only reason that this stuff we're talking about is useful is because it is part of a communication network. So one more thing, okay? We're going to have, let me just abbreviate it. We're going to have graded potentials, that stands for graded potential, we're going to have action potentials and we're going to have exocytosis. All right. So let's just start here. This nerve cell will send out an action potential and that will cause the exocytosis of neurotransmitters and the exocytosis of neurotransmitters will cause graded potentials up here in the dendrites and cell body, 
which might lead to an action potential. And if there's an action potential, then this cell will do exocytosis. And if there's exocytosis, there will be graded potentials here, which might lead to action potentials here, which will cause exocytosis here, et cetera. Right? Now, when we talk about it, we, you know, physiology profs argue about which one you should talk about first. And we're just going to talk about what's going on in the axon first. Right? Okay, hold on, one more thing. Here we go. Okay, neurons. Now, this is one type of neuron. You learned in 150 that there are multiple types of neurons. We're going to be talking about this particular neuron. Now, up here, up here we've got dendrites and cell bodies. Okay, dendrites and the cell body. The dendrites and the cell body you may think, oh, I'll memorize the difference between a dendrite and an axon because the dendrites are the short ones. First of all, ain't no one gonna ask you that question because not only is it not always true, but that's not the important thing about the difference between dendrites and axons. So dendrites, they take information toward the cell body, okay? Dendrites, they receive, oh, they receive neurotransmitters, and this is where graded potentials are gonna happen, all right? So here, these guys, you can't see, we don't have another nerve cell here, but the end of a different nerve cell would be sitting right here, and when the end of this nerve cell releases neurotransmitters, NTs, neurotransmitters, that will cause events called graded potentials, right? So dendrites, they take information towards the cell body. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, the axon. The axon takes information away from the cell body. I really, I really thought I had a pen. There we go. The axon takes information away from the cell body. And here is where we get action potentials. By the way, if you are looking up uh, this topic on YouTube, for example, some physiologists call action potentials nerve impulses. Nerve impulses. So a nerve impulse would be what I'm talking about as an action Sorry, action potential. I missed my whiteboard. <laughs> okay, so the action potential happens here. And then what happens down here? Down here, that is the axon terminal. That is where the synaptic end bulbs are. And these guys will release, which you now know means to exocytose neuro transmitters, transmitters, neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters will arrive at the dendrites and cell body of the next nerve cell in the line. And when the neurotransmitters arrive here, they cause a graded potential, which might cause an action potential. If there's an action potential, there will be exocytosis of neurotransmitters in the next nerve cell, et cetera. Ready? So, neurons. Neurons have a cell body. The cell body is where the nucleus lives. Attached to the cell body of dendrites. The cell body and the dendrites, they are capable of having graded potentials. I'm gonna just abbreviate it here, graded potentials. That's where graded potentials happen, All right? The axon, that is where the action potential, the action, the action potential, also nerve is the, known as the nerve impulse. That's where that happens, right? Um, and it's at the axon terminals that we will get the exocytosis of neurotransmitters. Okay, what else? The nissel body. You know there are so many uh, proteins that need to be made by nerve cells. 
um, and transported and transportation requires proteins too, that uh, there's a tremendous amount of rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cell body of a nerve cell and they get called missile bodies. And the, the, the acts out, outside of the nerve cell, its cell membrane, plus the surrounding uh, cells like Schwann cells, that together gets called the neurolemma. Um, let's talk about this word neuron. Nerve cells are tremendously unusual cells. They're so unusual that nerve cells are generally just referred to as neurons. Those are synonyms though. They are two terms for the same kind of cell. A neuron is a nerve cell. Now, that's not what a nerve is. A nerve, if you look at it, will be lots and lots and lots of axons of lots and lots of different neurons. So neurons, nerve cells, same thing. Nerve, that's something you can actually see with your naked eye. That's a different thing. Let's see, what else do we need to say here? Neurons are excitable. Neurons and muscle cells are both excitable. Now, muscle cells can do an extra thing, they can contract, but what does excitable mean? Excitable means that around their cell membrane, there is an uneven, between inside and outside, there's an uneven distribution of charge. By the way, that's true for all the cells of your body. All the cells of your body, there are too many positive ions on the outside and too many negative ions on the inside. So there's an uneven distribution of charge. How does that stay in place? Because of the phospholipid bilayer, it's selectively permeable, right? But now all the cells of the body do that. They have this uneven distribution of charge. What makes neurons and muscle cells excitable is they have got special proteins in their membrane that when those proteins open up, they will allow the positively charged ions to go rushing inside, and that will very rapidly change the charge across the membrane. And that makes, that is defined as being excitable. What's good about being excitable? That excitable quality makes it so that when neurotransmitters are released from a nerve cell touching a muscle cell, this will be my muscle cell here, okay? That excitable nature makes it so this muscle cell can go, oh, and contract, okay? What is exciting about being an excitable cell if you're a nerve cell? If you're a nerve cell, you don't contract, you don't use it for that reason. You use it to take information from here and carry it down to the next cell in the line, all right? So what part of a nerve cell takes information toward the cell body? So pause me, check your notes, look it up, give it some thought. What's the right answer? The dendrite. The dendrite takes information towards the cell body. The axon takes it away. The nissel body doesn't convey information at all. It's a modified rough endoplasmic reticulum. The myelin sheath can be part of the sarcolemma, neurolemma, and the axon hillock is the beginning of the axon, and it is also taking information away from the uh, cell body. All right. We will start there at the beginning of the next lecture.